Hey Astro Kids and welcome back. And in today's video we'll be talking about the horoscope for the month of April 2023. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So up on the screen here is a depiction of the different transits that are going to take place during this month of April. And this is a huge month as we are going to have a solar eclipse along with Jupiter finally making its way into the sign of Aries. We have a lot of activity mainly happening within the sign of Aries. So especially for those of you who have a cardinal sign or one of the Kendra signs, or if you have a fire sign, then this is going to be a major month for you. So starting off here, we have a full moon in the Hasta Naxatra. So this is definitely a time of letting go. The full moon we know is all about bringing things to a place of completion. And Hasta, especially as it is signified by a hand or a fist, is about grasping onto things. So this full moon is all about letting go of those tight attachments that you have that are no longer serving you. The sign of Virgo, as we know, is ruled by Mercury. So there's a lot of analysis, a lot of intellectual powers that are within this sign of Virgo. So this especially is about letting go of anything that you are worrying about, that you are trying to predict that might happen, really getting out of that space of anxiety and overanalyzing, letting go of all of those worries and concerns that no longer serve you. Following this, Venus will enter into its own sign of Taurus on the same day here on the 6th of April. So Venus feels very comfortable in the sign of Taurus. However, when Venus comes into Taurus, it will be hemmed by the Sun and Mars. So this is a bit of a difficult position for Venus to be, as the Sun is definitely an enemy of Venus and Mars is a malefic. So it is in a position where it is being hemmed or restricted by two malefics. So this is a little bit of a difficult period for relationships. You want to be very careful about how you are approaching relationships, not allowing anger or ego to get into the way of your connections. It's very important at this time. This can definitely be a time where you feel like you are stuck in a situation that you can't resolve. As this continues, though, this gets better. Venus being here in its own sign of Taurus, once again, is an excellent position. So as Venus comes out of this hemming by the Sun and Mars, this is definitely going to make relationships very peaceful, very well grounded. You can have a great deal of conversation and communication to work out any sort of conflicts. This is also an excellent time for family, as the sign of Taurus is connected to our early childhood and our sense of family and community. For some of you, Venus can also help you in the area of wealth and business, as Taurus is a very entrepreneurial sign. And Venus, of course, is all about the luxuries of life. So this is an excellent placement. Once again, Venus feels very much at home here in Taurus, so giving you a great sense of comfort and happiness. Following this, on the 14th, the sun will enter into the sign of Aries. So sun feels exalted in Aries, especially within the first asterism of Ashwini. So right away, coming into this energy of sun and Aries, there is a lot of strong energies coming in. This can definitely be a time of feeling a boost in your energy levels for some of you and really getting a feeling of confidence, of charisma, of really feeling that you are in control of things and moving forward, having that forward momentum. Following this on the 20th, we will have a solar eclipse. And of course, the solar eclipse is a very inauspicious time, as an eclipse is always where we have a shadow body that is covering up one of our luminaries. So the darkness is blocking out the sun during the eclipse. And in this case, this will be Rahu, which is covering up the sun. So this is definitely a time to not act hastily coming into this solar eclipse. This especially being in the Naksatra of Ashwani, you want to be very careful of any sort of ego issues or any sort of impulsiveness. Ashwini is all about speed. So you want to make sure that you are thinking through all of your decisions during this eclipse. Following this on the 21st, 
we will have Mercury entering into the sign of Aries retrograde. So this will actually station in the Noxatra of Barney. So as Mercury comes retrograde here, this is always, of course, a time of review, of going over everything, making sure that you're not missing out on any of the details. But as Mercury is here in Aries, this is creating a bit of a conflict here as Mars is not happy with Mercury, and Mercury has come into the house of Mars. So this is definitely a time to not be impulsive about your decision making. There's a, all of this passion and intensity that is here in Aries, where you can make quick decisions and jump ahead without thinking it through. And Barney, where this retrograde will take place, of course, is known as the star of restraint. So there is a need for self-restraint coming into this Mercury retrograde. Once again, not making hasty decisions, but finding a sense of patience and discipline is very important. Later on, on the 21st, we will finally see Jupiter entering into the sign of Aries. So we've been waiting for this transit for some time now. And Jupiter, of course, is friends with Mars. So this is a very positive transit as Jupiter comes into Aries. But this is not quite like Jupiter was in its own sign of Pisces, where it was more of a hermit, more of a mystic going inward. But here in Aries, Jupiter is very active, very adventurous, very ambitious. So this is a very fiery energy. This is definitely a time of being more outgoing, of being more focused on achieving your goals and pushing forward in life. This is encouraging you to live your life to the fullest and to incorporate a sense of excitement and activity in through this Jupiter and Aries. You do want to be careful, though, because as Jupiter comes into the sign of Aries, it will come into a conjunction with Ra. So Rahu tends to blow things out of proportion. And Jupiter, of course, is already a planet of expansion. So you want to be very careful about overexpanding in the area where Jupiter is placed within your natal chart. At the same time, Jupiter can help to pacify some of the negative effects of Rahu. So for those of you who have been struggling with this Rahu transit, Jupiter coming in here will bless you in this area where Rahu is positioned. So let's go ahead and talk about how this month of April will affect each of you according to your moon sign or ascendant sign. And just a quick disclaimer, I am using Vedic sidereal astrology. So I am not using Western tropical astrology. You want to make sure that you have the correct information so that you get the right interpretation. If you are not sure what your sidereal signs are, there is a calculator down below in the description where you can find out that information. So we will start off this month with a full moon here in your eighth house. Very intense. A lot of dramatic changes that are coming up here. And definitely this is about letting go of the past. So many of you dealing with some emotional difficulties, some burdens that you've been feeling throughout the past year here, especially with this heavy Saturn energy that's been back in your 12th house. This is about clearing, letting go, removing the past and moving on at this time. This is huge that you are letting go of all of these heavy emotional attachments. Following this, Venus will be entering into Taurus here in your fourth house. So really, this becomes about beautifying your home environment and finding a sense of inner peace and happiness. This can be a time where you're feeling more connected to your family, to your loved ones, especially as your Venus is ruling over your fourth and ninth house. So really feeling connected with your parents and your family and your traditions and values that have been passed down to you. This becomes very strong during this month. Following this, the sun will be entering into your third house. Huge deal of confidence that is coming to you throughout this transit. The sun lighting up this third house for you really gets you into a business mindset. You are really coming up with new ideas, new skills, new knowledge that you want to put to the test. And this can really help you as the sun is ruling over your seventh house, really making you popular, well-known at this time through some of your skills and abilities. So this is definitely a time to be courageous and to take the initiative to move forward in these areas. Following this, though, there will be a solar eclipse in this third house as well. So you want to be very careful about anything dealing with communication, with travel, transportation. All of this can go haywire at this time as Rahu will be eclipsing the sun. And shortly after this, we will also have a Mercury retrograde here in this 
third house. So really trying to get you to review everything about your immediate environment and everything having to do with the media, technology, transportation, all of this coming to mind. You really want to look at the small print and make sure that everything is in order. This Mercury retrograde may also be a time where some of you are thinking about returning back to education as well. So there's definitely something here big about reviewing some of your decisions around your education and around your path in general. Following this will be Jupiter, the main event, entering into the sign of Aries here in this third house. This is huge. This is definitely a time where you are feeling more social, more about wanting to connect and relate to others, more so getting involved with the world around you and what is happening in your immediate environment. This definitely gets you interested in travel and in learning. This is a huge time for this. This can really expand your network circle. This can give you opportunities around relationship matters as well. So this is a huge time opening up many doorways for you. Jupiter, though, as it first enters into this third house, of course, will come into a conjunction with Rahu. So you want to be very careful coming into this initial point here of not taking too many risks with this Rahu energy. This can overexpand things. This can feel overwhelming at first coming into this third house with all of these doorways and connections that are opening up to you. For those of you with a Pisces moon or Pisces ascendant, This will be a full moon starting off here for you in Virgo. So really opening up the doorway to new possibilities here for you. This is definitely a very creative time and a time of really getting into exploring your talents and abilities. This full moon really puts you in the spotlight as it is here in your seventh house. So this can definitely be a time where you are very attractive, where you are very much animated and emotional and able to connect and relate to others. But this can also be a time of letting go of some old attachments and relationships or bringing things to a space of closure. So that this is definitely a time of wrapping things up in this area of relationships, definitely talking things out, putting things on the table. And for some of you, even having to let go of old connections that no longer serve you. This could also be a time where you are having some past connections that are returning as well, or where you are finding a past life connection through this. Following this, we will see Venus, which is entering into your third house, really making your communication very polite, very diplomatic. So this is increasing this Taurus energy that's here in this third house. This definitely is a great time to get into any kind of creative pursuits, getting into music, arts, into literature, all of this opening up here with Venus coming into this third house. This can be a very social time where you are well liked in your local community. Of course, coming into this transit though, Venus will be hemmed between the sun and Mars. So initially this can definitely feel like you are being restrained in some way in this third house. Some of you even feeling like you are not fitting in or you are being pressured by others. But as Venus comes out of this hem, this really helps you in terms of your social interactions and connecting with others. Following this, the sun will be entering into your second house here, really putting a huge spotlight on your wealth, on your family, on your possessions. This is definitely a huge time where you are thinking about your resources. Now remember that Rahu is here in this second house, so this is definitely has been a huge clean out time for a lot of you, really putting the past behind you, really clearing out debts and outstanding financial situations, and really starting to build a sense of stability. The sun coming in here definitely gets you really involved with this, where you are going to be focusing heavily on your finances. Sun coming into the second house can also give you a very charismatic way of speaking. You have a very powerful voice at this time, and people are listening to you. So this is an excellent transit. This is excellent for resolving conflicts as the sun is ruling over that sixth house of your chart. Following this, though, will be a solar eclipse. So you do want to be very careful about your speech as you come through this eclipse, as Rahu will be covering up the sun at this time. So you can be a little bit headstrong with your communication with the way that you're speaking to others at this time as well. 
Following this will be a Mercury retrograde also here in this second house. So you do want to pay attention to your finances at this time, making sure that you're looking over all of the details and fine print is extremely important, especially when it comes to any kind of business dealings. If you are in a business partnership and you want to carefully look over all of the details as Mercury is ruling over your seventh house. For some of you, even property concerns as well. You want to make sure you're looking over all of the details here. Mercury is really wanting you to get into the details and making sure that you're not missing anything. Remember that Mercury will be retrograde and barney. So this is all about discipline and self-restraint. Having the patience to really take your time over things and to not become too impulsive in this area. Following this will be the main event of Jupiter entering into the sign of Aries. Jupiter has been here in your first house for some time now, giving you guys some good health and a great deal of wisdom and spirituality for some of you. This could have been a great time for your education, for travels, really bringing in a sense of good fortune into your life. But Jupiter in the first house has also made you a bit of a hermit as well as Pisces is all about going into the cave and meditating and gaining this sense of liberation and enlightenment. So as Jupiter pushes ahead into your second house, this is definitely going to make you more extroverted, more involved with your family and connections at this time. This could be an excellent time for your relationships as Jupiter will be aspecting onto your eighth house. As well as finances, Jupiter will protect you with your finances as it comes into this second house. This will also be a time where you are thinking about the practical concerns of life and this can open up new doorways for you in terms of career as well. So this is a excellent transit as Jupiter pushes ahead into the sign of Aries. 